Today, I'm super excited to share with you a jacket with a zipper and a hood. It's got some hidden features in the seams that give you amazing bust shaping. I also found this amazing print that's gonna trick you. Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. From my home in Brazil, this is my backyard. I've been traveling for a little while, but I'm finally back in my own surroundings. The make I'm gonna show you today was the first make of the year, if I'm not mistaken, because I did a lot of sewing in the first week of January. I'm always so happy when I see Kenneth come out with a new pattern. I know that I always like them, especially because of the fit. And even with this style, there's fitting features in here that just make it really different and unique. And this is called Nazare hoodie. So Kenneth made hers in a red knit. You can really see the details there. I'm also putting some line out so you can see. The back is simple. It's just a back piece on the fold. So there's nothing special at the back. Like usual, most of the interesting design lines are on the front and you can see that there are some diagonal seams there. Now there is one diagonal seam that starts sort of from the armhole and comes across sort of under the back and you know it does look just like a seam but there's actually bust shaping incorporated into there and I love that I think it makes a huge difference for a type of garment like this that's usually a bit more boxy and then on the front also you see another diagonal seam and that's just the shape of the big patch pocket that's on the front the patch pocket also has a sort of curved diagonal pocket entrance so I really was drawn to that there's a zipper up and down all the way of course <laughs> there's a hem band I like that this hem band isn't super tight so it's just a tad smaller than the bottom so it's not going to be super tight at the hips usually I don't like it when it's tight at the hips long sleeves the cuff the cuff is not a rectangle it's slightly shaped anatomic so it's a little wider here and a little more narrow over there and there is a hood piece it's a simple hood two pieces it's unlined and I think what makes the look of this jacket more professional is the way that you finish things inside so with twill tape you're going to cover that zipper tape and also you're going to cover the seam that unites the hood to the neckline for the fabrics medium weight I think would be the best type. I think lightweight would look a bit floppy especially with the pocket details on the front. I think the pocket entrance would just flop and not look too good and if it's too heavy I think it could get bulky because there are some areas that have a few layers there to sew through especially in the intersection of these diagonal seams and when you're sewing on the zipper. So I wouldn't want to go too heavy or too light. With a stretch it's really flexible 25 to 50 percent. Make sure it stretches horizontally. If your fabric only has an uh, amount of give vertically it's not that important so don't stress if your fabric doesn't stretch much vertically or if it doesn't stretch vertically because you'll be okay so you can use sweat shirting Ponty Roma, French Terry, Stretch Velvet, <laughs> Athletic Knit, Cotton Lycra if it's a little heavier than the one that you use for t-shirts, even fleece it has a nice amount of stretch and I'm putting with an Asterisk scuba because I've worked with some scuba that is not too heavy and some that's really really heavy so just make sure because it could get bulky but it can work. You need other little bits and pieces like fusible stay tape if you have some. I don't use that, I don't have that so I just cut my own little strips of interfacing and that works 100%. And depending on what size you make, the length of the separating zipper that you need. Let me show you my fabric because I have an amount left. I found this fabric the second day I arrived in Chile last year. I went with my dad to a fabric shopping district over there and I found this Ponty Roma that has this amazing print. So when you look at it, you would think it's a wool boucle just because of the details of the print. But it's not wool and it's not boucle and it's not <laughs> a woven. It is a knit, it's a Ponty knit. And it has a really nice amount of stretch horizontally. Vertically, it has less, barely any. It just has a little bit of give. I would say this has about 10% stretch and horizontally about 40 to 50. So I think this is perfect, it's nice and structured, but also this Ponty Roma has rayon in the mix, in the composition, so it makes it really soft, just a little bit drapey, but not too much. I think it's really nice, and I'm so fortunate to have found this, because now I'm gonna trick you into thinking I've got this super high-end type of hoodie, <laughs> but it's just the print that makes it look like that. And I have an amount left for a pencil skirt, so that'll be fun. Whenever each to Stitch releases a new pattern, like the Nazare, it's always 20% off for the first week so you'll find it discounted automatically on the website through Sunday the 29th. I'll leave you my affiliate link down below. If you click on the link and purchase I do receive a small commission but it doesn't cost you any extra. I'm very grateful because it's one of the ways I make an income making all these videos here on YouTube. So
sizing is really good from 00 to 40 US. That goes up to a 62 inch hip. And there is a regular bust and a full bust option here. As I mentioned, you're gonna have bust shaping coming from here with that diagonal seam. So the shape will change whether you're doing the regular bust or the full bust. I'll put a graphic here so you can see, measure yourself. What is your high bust? What is your full bust? What is the difference? If it's three inches or less, you can use a regular bust. Three inches or more, use the full bust. Go by feel. Whenever Kenneth designs patterns, I have a full bust option for knit. In her way of drafting and the way they fit me, the full bust option works best for me. I'm right there at the three inch. You know, whether I lose or gain weight, I always keep that three inch difference. It seems sort of standard no matter what weight I'm at. But the full bust is a really great option for me with this brand. There are other brands that have full bust options where I've tried them and it's just too much ease it's just not correct I just stay with a regular bust that's what you get when you're a sewing C cup you sort of yeah <laughs> the Nazari is semi-fitted it's not boxy it's not super tight I think it's just right it hits the mid hip I would say in the original design and you have some positive ease so around the bust you have four to five inches of positive ease a little space in, in there so you can wear something underneath your jacket at the waist it's more straight so you have about nine inches there and at the hips about one inch this is the type of jacket I like to wear because I feel like I'm not getting swallowed by a lot of fabric and I'm not holding a lot of fabric around me so perfect amount of ease in my opinion. You know with the finished garment measurements you can see a lot of things and Kenneth always includes finished length so from here down to the bottom. I always check that because I know exactly what I like for my height and my, my length proportions so I knew I had to add some length as I usually do so on the front and the back pieces you find a shorten and lengthen line there. I added one and a half inches but you also need to add to the pocket piece that's on the front because it's part of the front piece so it just make sure that whatever you do, either you're taking away length overlapping or spreading apart your pattern, you also do the front pocket piece as well because otherwise it won't make any sense. <laughs> For the sleeves, I just added one inch. That's all I did. Most of my fitting adjustments are usually related to length just because I'm a little taller. So I'm not shocked or impressed or like bummed that I have to do those things. You know, I'm sewing for myself. I want things to fit me and my height and be customized to me. So I'm happy to do all the little tweaks that I need to get an amazing fit the way I want it to be. I took the time to film almost the whole construction of the Nazari hoodie. I know there are a lot of features here that are quite different to other things. The only thing I didn't film were the sleeves and the cuffs, but I do mention it and show it. It's just that I didn't film it because it's quite easy. <laughs> but we're gonna see how we're interfacing some areas that need to be stabilized. We're gonna see how to sew these pockets that are so easy to sew, how to assemble the front pieces with that diagonal seam, you know, main construction, how to sew in that zipper, how to cover the zipper with twill tape. You're also gonna see me do something with the hoodie. It is an unlined hoodie and I didn't wanna change the construction technique um, because it's a pattern test. So I decided to interline my hood, which means I'm not changing anything. I'm just having another light layer on the top and then acting like it's just one piece for the hood to be black inside and not this white color because otherwise you would see this and I don't think this is especially pretty. So that's what I did to not line it, but interline it. Or because I didn't really want to change the sewing method, you know? It's gonna be the same. I didn't have twill tape. I never have twill tape. I've never been able to find anything nice and any twill tape I've ever found has been white and that doesn't go with everything. So I made my own replacement and it's super easy. So let's see how to put the Nazari hood together. It is a, a bit of a longer video because yeah, there's a lot to see. Hope you enjoy. Here are all the pattern pieces for the Nazare jacket and you can see that the front is composed of two pieces. There's the upper front and the lower front. On the center front you can see I have a section that's already interfaced. We'll see the details about that later but you can see there's sort of like a buster coming from the armhole. It's not an actual buster, it's just been removed and turned into a seam and this is a full bust option. So that's where the bust shaping comes from for this hoodie, which I think is really good. Now in this area, we're gonna have pockets. The type that will just go on top and in this section is gonna be the pocket opening and we're gonna have that diagonal seam and another seam like that I think is really cool. The back is cut on the fold, that's really simple. This is a hem band that's gonna go all the way across the bottom. The separating zipper. Depending on your size, what length it has to be, there's a chart that tells you. Hood pieces, it's a really simple hood with just a seam on the top, sleeve and cuff. 
that's all. For these center front areas, you can interface that after sewing this together. But because I like to block fuse and fuse this before cutting out the pieces, I just decided to interface them before joining them. I don't think it makes that much of a big difference. But you can see that the interfacing is not right on the edge of the fabric. It's about 3 8 of an inch away. And then on the pocket entrance, you also have 3 8 of an inch wide fusible tape. If you have some, I just cut my own from interfacing. And that's going to stabilize the curved pocket opening right there. This is also going to be in this area but because the front piece has been interfaced you don't need to double up the interfacing there. Later when I've sewn the band on then I'm going to fuse a piece of interfacing once the band is on, once I have a full front including the band right there but at a later stage. So I just have my interfacing pieces ready. You can see they don't stretch. It's the same thing as if you buy fusible state tape then if you just cut pieces of interfacing. This is how one of the pocket pieces look. This is actually going to go on top of the bottom front piece and this curved area is the one that we fuse some interfacing. It was easy to mold it to the curve because it's not that wide so that's done. The other thing I've already done is serge the edge there. What I did was serge up to there and cut it off, serge up to there, cut it off and then I did that one separately and then I tied off little knots when I unraveled the loop that you get from the serger thread. So that's going to be long lasting. You're going to see that dot and that dot here but because we're going to fold this in, you're not going to see it anymore. I'm going to poke a pin that will come out the other side so I know where those dots are. Now my print is pretty busy so it's sort of hard to mark on the right side so I don't want to mark anything. I can see the pin coming out, that's where I know the dot is. So what we need to do now is just fold this in. So it's 3 8 on these edges but here where the interfacing is you're going to end up with 3 quarters. When you fold it, it's not going to turn out super smooth from the get-go. So I helped myself along by hand basting. You can see the red thread there. That's hand basted that down. And then once it was all hand basted really neat, I went and pressed it and steamed it. And then it turned out super smooth. When you just do this, you get pockets of all types here. But remember, this is a neat fabric. It's stretchy, you know, it's going to mold. And the steam is going to make it turn out super neat like this. So you can see that on the edges is 3 8 there but in this area it's three quarters and you can see the pins poking out from where those dots were inside so I know that these are the references here so I'm just gonna do the exact same thing on this one and then we'll be ready to do some top stitching on the pocket entrance here Okay, you can see that when it's just basted it's quite wavy it doesn't sit right but with the steam just a nice amount of steam it will turn out really really flat and neat like this one here i have the two pins marking where those dots were and once i've got this one pressed we're gonna top stitch from that mark to that mark there and from the folded edge this way it'll be a 5 8 seam allowance Okay, so that's where I started sewing and that's where I stopped sewing and if you look on this side it's basically just catching this area that had the wider seam allowance. So that's there. Remember this area was interfaced so that means that this area of the pocket opening doesn't stretch and it's not going to start gaping and deforming over time. I'm going to keep the hand basting here though because we still have things to do when we put this onto the front piece and that comes next. This is the bottom front piece right here. This is the bottom, this is the center front and then we have that diagonal shape. We're going to have another front piece sewn up there after we sew the pocket and this is a partial armhole there. So make sure it looks just like this, right sides up and now you're going to get the matching pocket for this side, right sides up as well. And these are going to align perfectly here on this shape. Pocket has that diagonal shape that matches this one and the center fronts are going to match right here. So we have the pocket on top, it all matches. I've put a few pins here just to hold everything in place and remember we had top stitch just the pocket opening from here to there well these little sections on the side we're gonna edge stitch so so from this side up to the edge and then from this side up to that edge and then do a second row to hold it all down the rest of the pocket is going to be caught in the side seam it's going to be caught in the hem band and then it's going to be caught in the center front with a zipper later so the pocket bag is going to be quite generous here around the front let's just get this done i'm going to put some pins here in this section where i want to top stitch this down right there and right there. I'm edge stitching one of the short sides on either ends of the actual pocket opening. This is just close to the edge. 
And now I'm doing the other side, the one that's at the center front. Now that I've sewn these two sections, this one and the one over here, I'm gonna just repeat about a quarter of an inch from the edge stitching, just a second row. That will just strengthen the pocket opening basically. Because the wrong side of my fabric is white, I guess you can see the two rows there easier than over here where all the print is. The last step we do is do a bar tack here to close it off. I can't really do a bar tack here. I can't regulate my zigzags or do anything like that. So I'm just gonna do a straight stitch from where we did the top stitching for the pocket opening from there up to there basically. So that's how that looks. It's easy to see on this side how I just did a straight stitch there to hold this pocket opening in place. So it's closed off right there. But if you can do a bar tack, do that instead. And then I'll just do the same thing on this side right here. That's how the other side looks. The last step we need to do with the pocket is just baste all this together so that this acts now like one piece and this can just be the bottom front piece. Then we can forget that the pocket is there and just continue putting the other pieces together and we can get the top front bit and sew it here on this diagonal seam. You can sew this by machine but I'd rather just do it by hand. Now that the pockets are on we just need to sew the top front to the bottom front piece. This just acts like one piece now because the pockets are on and basted all around so they're not going to go anywhere. So we basically just need to align these. This is how the pieces are going to look so that this diagonal seam meets that other one. It's quite curved. There's a notch there to help you put them together. So we'll get that sewn. I'll do that with my sewing machine and then I'll serge it and then we'll have a completed front. I wanted to show you how this looks when it's pinned. This is a notch that matches on both sides and here you're going to have this little shape that's going to complete the armhole as you can see it's been trued to match perfectly so that needs to match right here that little shape coming out and over here in the center front the top front needs to protrude a little bit like a little tag but at the seam line 3 8 it's going to meet the edge so we'll just sew these together and then serge them Okay, so that's that seam sewn and then the seam allowance needs to be pressed up towards the top front piece and then we're going to have a completed front. That diagonal seam there, that diagonal seam there. Of course if this was a solid you would see it more. What I have is the back piece and you can see on the shoulder seams a bit of black. I have fused a bit of interfacing there to stabilize the shoulders and so I'm just going to flip these right sides up. This is the back, it's just cut on the fold. It's one piece, very simple and I'm going to put the two front pieces right there to match the shoulders. Because I'm working with a fabric that's a little heavy I'd rather not just serge them. I'm gonna serge the edges separately and sew it with a sewing machine so I can press the seams open. So I'll get that done. In the instructions, after you sew the shoulders, you can sew your sleeves in on the flat. That's how you typically do it. But I'm gonna set mine in right at the very end on the round. So I've got my sleeves already done. I've sewn the seam of the sleeve. I've attached the cuff and I've just put them out of the way. And I'm gonna leave these for the very, very end. So I'd rather do the zipper, the hood, all of that the band everything everything and then put the sleeves in at the end I really don't need the sleeves weighing everything down like they don't need to be there and if I'm gonna put them on the round they can go at the very end so we'll just forget about them okay I've sewn the simple seams off camera I've sewn the shoulder seams and the side seams the side seams I've done the same I searched the edges first and then sewed it with a sewing machine press the seams open I prefer to do that with Ponte Roma and so I'm just gonna extend this saw this is the bottom of the hoodie right here right sides up. The hem band is not much shorter than the bottom so you won't need to be stretching it out a whole lot and all I've done with the hem band is press it wrong sides together in half lengthwise and there's a notch right here that's going to match a side seam and another one over here and I've put a pin at the center back and so all we need to do is align this at the bottom and sew them together. 
So the band's gonna go like this, right sides together, and we sew it all the way across the bottom. Ponty is super easy to manipulate, so I'm not using a lot of pins at all. I've just got the references pinned, and I can align the raw edges super easy. So I'm just stretching the band only slightly to match the bottom of the hoodie underneath. So the band is not really that much smaller. It's not gonna be super tight or end up with puckers. So I really like that about this one. Sewing it all the way across with 3 8 seam allowance, and then I'm gonna surge it, press the seam up towards the hoodie. So here is the hem band sewn, seam allowance pressed up towards the jacket and basically at this stage this is when you would fuse your interfacing from the very bottom of the band all the way up to the top to the neckline and you fuse it 3 8 away from the cut edge right here. I fused these before and I did them in stages so now that I've got the band on I'm just going to fuse this little piece right here. I've got my interfacing and I'm just going to align it right here. So when you fuse interfacing it basically eliminates the stretch, the vertical stretch of this knit that helps you get a really nice even zipper with no waves. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side over there. This is the wrong side of the zipper and you can tell because the pull is on this side. So this is the right side and this is the wrong side. If you look at the middle right there where the teeth are, you need to measure 5 eighths of an inch from one side to the other centered over the zipper. So if you measured from here to there, it's 5 eighths of an inch and you need to mark a line. Now it's really hard to mark with this huge thick chalk, but I did measure and it's basically where the stitch changes here on the zipper anyway. The weave on this tape changes. So I'm not gonna have to mark it. Maybe your zipper tape does something similar. I've noticed that it just looks different here than right there. I hope you can see what I'm seeing. So I know that I have to sew right there. I'm not gonna have to mark. I have the right wearer side of the jacket. So if I put this on, this would be on my right side. And you know, it's correct. It's so right sides up. My right hand would be right in there. So if you wanna follow along, just do it like this. <laughs> on the other side, everything has been interfaced. And now we need to take the zipper and put it right sides together with the jacket. So you make sure that the paw is touching the jacket like that. And I prefer to do it without separating the zipper. I don't like taking them apart. When we look at it from this side, you can see that the interfacing is 3 8 away from the edge. So basically where the interfacing is, that's where I need to align that mark that I was supposed to make here on the zipper, which is where the zipper changes. That is where my mark would be. I haven't marked it. And so that's where I'm gonna start pinning there. And that's gonna match right there. And just put a pin through there and come out on the other side where the interfacing is. I'm actually gonna start from the bottom. This is the zipper stop and I'm gonna pin all the way to the bottom right here. And that's how I'm gonna start pinning up. Make sure you're basting on the tape right side together with the jacket. If you keep going up, I have all that that I scribbled to make sure I knew that that was the right side. There's a zipper pull. Those are touching. What I've done here is make a mark exactly where the seam is. There's a diagonal seam. You can see it from this side. So if I poke a pin right through that seam here and come out the other side. I have the mark right there. That's where the pin's coming out of. So I drew a mark there and there and that's gonna help me match the other zipper tape so that that diagonal seam ends up being right there as well. That's the most important part that you need to match. And then we go all the way up. I always need to trim off teeth so that doesn't bother me. Just make sure you have the zipper tape right sides together. I think it's a really easy mistake to make. I think it's easier to sew these without separating the zipper. So if you bring this other side that doesn't have the tape tape yet and just bring them close together. You see that when we sew this we end up flipping it like this right and then this ends up being folded in and that's how it's sewn. I always like doing things like that because it really helps you visualize how things come together without over complicating. So just do it like this. That's sewn there, flip it like it's gonna be sewn. Bring your other side, fold it in, place it there. And then what you do is you just put your hand in there and hold the two layers together firmly. And then you flip everything the other way. I'm still holding it, right? And I'm gonna put a pin just to hold it there, but I'm not, I haven't started doing anything. Then I'm gonna flip this to the other side and align this at the bottom here. And then this is how I'm gonna baste the other side now. All the way up, making sure that these align. So I'm gonna put a pin pin right there. Remember I'm sewing, I'm sewing where the stitch sort of changes on the zipper and I'm gonna come and poke this right through there, that seam on the other side, right there. This needs to match exactly. I'll start pinning from here down and from here up until I have it all hand basted and pinned. When I was fusing this on, I guess I should have fused it a little bit over this way, like 
maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch or maybe just the whole way really if I make this again I'm going to put interfacing towards the edge there because when I was uh, basting on the zipper I really wanted to catch the interfacing part because the interfaced part is what got rid of the vertical stretch in the knee I've done the work of basting it all over again I've changed nothing it's just that now you have an excess of the main fabric here on each end it won't really affect anything I've just made sure to baste where I'm catching a little bit of the interface section right there just a little bit on the edge so I've done that on both sides and now I'm just going to sew the zipper tape I've got the basting right where I need to sew I don't care if I'm going to sew over the basting stitch I can just remove it later but it's a good guide and I'll sew from the top down and then I'll sew from the top down. I'm, I don't want to sew in different directions. Now because I want to sew from the top to the bottom I'm just going to switch the side the presser for is placed you know you can change it from one side to the other and that gives you good access no matter what side you're sewing on so now I'm gonna sew on this other side so when I look at it from this side I want these bands to match and they do right there and then up here where this diagonal seam is you can see that they also match right there and that's what all the lines on the zipper were for and then at the top of course you want these edges to be at the same level you don't want to have one higher than the other I think the hand basting goes a long way I know I've caught the hand basting within the seams but that doesn't matter I'll just remove it <laughs> and don't worry about this raw business it's going to be covered now with a twill tape I don't have twill tape but I'll show you what I made now I'm just going to turn this the other way around so I can unzip it and now finally I'm going to separate this <laughs> now that it's already sewn and we can deal with each edge individually so here's one of the edges now if you have twill tape then this is really easy you can use 3 eighths of an inch or half an inch wide twill tape I don't have any so I made myself half an inch tape it looks like bias tape right but this is cut on the straight of grain it doesn't need to be on the bias because we're only going to cover a straight seam you need it on the bias if you're going to go around curves so it was really easy to cut and I just used leftover 100% linen so just pretend this is twill tape <laughs> with twill tape you would have finished edges right my finished edges are actually the folded edges right there so from the bottom we're going to start covering this I'm going to leave some excess hanging off and this is what's going to cover the zipper tape and that excess seam allowance and it's going to turn out super neat what I want to make sure is that I've got the same distance from the zipper teeth all the way there is my tape cut on the straight of grain basted on you can see it's protruding over the raw edge so it's going to cover everything when we do the second stage of flipping it to the inside and then sewing it again but first we need to sew it down here and just sew it right there on the edge I'm going to use the zipper presser foot for this as well because you just get better access Then I've been to the iron and I've pressed it in like that. So now this is where we sew it down again. But we have the bottom. I've left a little dangling. All we need to do here is just fold the excess up like this. And then fold over. And that's how it's going to be neat at the bottom. Okay, so that's how the twill tape this is not twill tape but let's pretend it is. It's finished at the bottom. It's just folded in. I've hand basted it. And now I'm just going to stitch this down. The top here can be left raw. It's going to be finished with a hood in a later stage and I still need to pull out some teeth. The part where the band is is quite bulky so I just hand wheeled over there. So that's done, sewn on this edge, sewn on that edge and on this side we're just going to have one row of top stitching there. It looks super neat. In my print you can barely see it. For this pattern the hood is just in a single layer and that would be okay if I was using a solid and it was the same color 
but you can see that my wrong side is not that pretty the pont is pretty on the printed side but on this side I really don't want that to show I also don't want to change any of the construction method I want to keep it as the original so what I've done here is just cut another layer of a really lightweight knit it's a super lightweight athletic knit and I've just cut two layers with the same pattern piece and I've just placed it on top this is going to be the right side of my hood this is going to be the wrong side and now the sewing method is going to be exactly the same I've just interlined it as such I've hand basted it all the way around all the same thing and now when I wear the hood you're just going to see black so you just put them together and sew that curved seam this is a really simple no fuss hood so just that seam there After sewing this curved seam of the hood, now we open it up and we take the straight edge and we finish this one. So I'm going to serge this straight edge now here, all along here. And the way this is finished is just folded in, but that's done at the very, very, very last Get your hood put them right sides together remember this looks black because i've interlined and now we're just going to pin this right there where that seam is we're going to pin along and we have a little mark there on the hood that's going to meet the shoulder seam right here and then over here we need to leave three quarters of an inch protruding from here when you look at it from this side you need to leave three quarters of an inch hanging off there and the same on the other side this matches right there everything matches really good and over here make sure you leave the same three quarters of an inch hanging off right there Okay, here's the neckline, wrong sides up. I have snipped into the curves there, so it's more flexible, the hood is under there. So now we're gonna take our twill tape. In my case, my tape cut on the straight of grain with the folds in there, same thing. And I'm just gonna start putting this so it covers that seam just barely so just a hair and I might need to trim the seam allowance down actually I made mine to be half an inch wide if you're using 3 eighths of an inch twill tape you definitely need to trim I, I'm gonna trim okay I finished trimming it all off and now I'm sure that my tape is gonna cover it all so just wear the zipper teeth are, don't worry too much it's gonna be covered so just start around there and make sure the tape covers that seam if you have twill tape it's gonna be so easy so I'm gonna pin all along Okay, after sewing that, we still have this loose and the seam allowance is tucked under there, but we need to sort out this. Now what we have to do is wrap this around nice and tight right here. I'm gonna put a pin and I'm gonna just sew again right on top where I've sewn before and then flip it and that's gonna hide all that area. So that's how that looks and now when you flip it, it's gonna be super neat like this. We still have all of this loose, but at least this already is gonna fix that. This is the other side. I'm gonna bring this and just wrap it around here and do the same thing, sew that down. Okay, that's done. Remember you're wrapping it around this side and then when you flip it, you're gonna end up with a really clean edge right here. But now we just need to cover up the seam and tidy up the other edge of the tape. So I'm just gonna pin it again, hand baste it again and then sew it down. And that finishes this area. And then at the very last step, we can finish this, like the hem of the hood, not the hem, but the entrance of the hood that goes at the very end.
So I think this looks beautiful. It's so neat and so clean. And it's not just about looking neat. It's about stabilizing this. This is on the straight of grain. So this is not going to let your neckline get deformed and start stretching out over time. So after finishing that edge of the tape, now I'm going to finish the edge of the hood. That's sort of the last step. I've got it hand basted as well. You fold it in by three quarters of an inch and you can see everything in here is super clean. I've used a straight stitch for this. I don't really need a twin needle for this, so I just went ahead and used my regular needle with a regular thread. My last step is gonna be putting in the sleeve. Here is my hoodie. Look, the cutting stages took ages because initially when I looked at the print, I thought, you know, I don't need to pattern match, it's quite busy. But then I realized there were certain elements in the print that did need to match. So you can see that there's this darker area here. There's a darker area over there. There are quite a few things that did need to match. I didn't want to have that in different levels because I think you could have really seen that. With the back, I didn't really worry that much. That's just a back on the fold. And I didn't worry about matching the sides either. I think that's busy enough. I didn't need to do that. I just worried about the front, especially because there's a zipper there as well so that was important to me this is my black separating zipper right here and there is the hem band at the bottom now the technique to sew the zipper is quite easy that when you actually sew the zipper tape because you have already sewn the hem band when the zipper goes on so I usually don't like that technique because you can see the band over here it's easy but then when I was seeing the rest of the instructions and saw that everything was going to be covered, then I thought, yeah, that's fine. It looks really neat. So that's how the center front looks on the inside. You know, the tape that I made out of linen covers everything and it looks super neat. Now, if you look at, you know, ready to wear items that are made really fast, usually this is not done. And then you can see the hem band there and it's really bulky. So I don't like that. But because this technique is here, I think it's really nice and it's okay. So it does simplify things because there are other fiddly methods to enclose the zipper tape between the hem band here. Much more fiddly than this is, so that's good. And so the whole zipper tape is covered all the way up to here. You see how this area was sort of enclosed and then the seam that unites the hood, the hood to the neckline is also covered with the same type of tape. This, other than making it pretty, just stabilizes it so it doesn't stretch out and you have like a deformed hood over time, which can happen. I like to pretend my ponte is a woven and I press seams open and I sew everything with a sewing machine. So that's what you see there on the shoulders. I don't like sewing directly on the serger with the ponte. I think it's really bulky. I just don't like it. But you can do that if you want. <laughs> the side seams are also the same. They're pressed open like that. And on the inside, you're just going to have this diagonal seam that you see there. And this is where the bust shaping is here. It's part of the armhole. And I think it's genius that Kenneth was able to incorporate bust shaping into a sort of casual style like this. I think it's great. Especially when you have a larger bust, you know, when you tend to wear designs that are looser, more boxy, you get a lot of excess folds here. It's just, the fit isn't that great, but this is amazing. <laughs> Hemband at the bottom, my sleeves and cuffs. You know, I like to sew them on the round, whether it's a knit or a woven. I go into depth about that in a video on the channel if you want. <laughs> I'll link it down below so you can see why. Usually patterns tell you to do it on the flat for knits, but I just I just do it on the round. That's just the way I like to do it. It doesn't really change the look. So it's the same look. Entrance right here, it's quite a nice amount of space you've got there. This is my interlined hood. So this knit that I have here is extremely lightweight. It's super, super lightweight. And you saw I just treated it as one piece, basted them all around the edges, and then just pretended that was my hood piece and I sewed it exactly the same as if this were not interlined. So the sewing technique didn't change, it's just that when I wear it now, you're gonna see this black instead of the white there. So I took some pictures and filmed some video right before the day before I left my mom's house. So different background in Chile, my parents. This is my Nazare hoodie from Itch to Stitch. I used a really cool print, Ponte Roma, that looks like a wool boucle. And this is a really cool design, that has diagonal features. They're not just for being pretty, but there's also a buster incorporated into this. So these seams actually give you shaping for the bust, which I think is amazing. I have the full bust option here, fully zipped up. It has a hoodie and a hemband, some cuffs there on the sleeves. Here you can see those diagonal seams on the front. And on one of these diagonal seams, you have these cool inseam pockets. 
and it's a really nice fit it's not oversized you can see that the fit at the hips is just right here you can see my hood I interlined it so that's why it looks black because the inside of my ponte is white the finishing side covering the zipper tape with twill tape is really cool super professional looking very very neat I love techniques like that and it's a really nice hood it's got a nice shape it's not too big it's not too small and it's gonna be perfect for in between weather and I really love this one I think it looks a little bit like a dressed up hoodie just because I was fortunate to find such an amazing print like this that looks like boucle when it's actually not I think you're really going to like this one. The techniques, the instructions, the drafting is all top notch. If you're looking for a layering piece for in between weather, I think this is amazing. Not just because of the fitting features, but because it's unique. I like designs that have different types of seams, the pockets. It just gets me motivated to sew. So this ticks all my boxes. I'm really, really happy with mine. I wish I would have had time to make a basic black one because I know I would love that. Don't forget that the Nazare hoodie pattern is 20% off through Sunday the 29th. As always, find my affiliate link down below. Expect quite a few videos from here until the end of the month. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out all the fun sewing content and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.